The next speaker in this session uh, is Francesca Secato from University of Padova. Uh, her topic today is an unsaturated NPM formulation for the study of dams and leaves. Uh, Professor Francesca is uh, is mm, an is a research of the geotechnic group at the University of Pod Padova, Italy, and her current research <laughs> interests are material point method, soil characterization, <laughs> and the <laughs> presentation of historic <laughs> heritage, in particular the study of ancient foundations of the city of Venice. Okay. Uh, let's welcome uh, Professor Francesca Secato. Uh, okay. I'll share my screen. Okay. So thank you for the introduction. My <coughs> presentation is uh, entitled An Unsaturated NPM Formulation for the Study of Dam and Levy. Levy and dam failure can cause severe damages and loss of human lives. These are some examples of recent events uh, in Italy and in the US. There are several mechanisms that can lead to failure, such as overtopping, uh, internal and external erosion, global stability. Most of them in so involve soil, water, air interaction. So accounting for the unsaturated behavior of soil is crucial. In this presentation, I will focus on macro instabilities due to changes in the pore water pressure regime. Currently, the stability of levy and dam is evaluated by estimating a factor of safety, coupling a seepage analysis with a limit equilibrium method or the strength reduction method. Uh, the minimum values of the factor of safety are given by the national standard. Uh, with both limit equilibrium method and finite element method, uh, the post-failure behavior cannot be computed. However, this is an important information for risk assessment and management uh, because the same value of the factor of safety, let's say about one or slightly lower than one, in different slope can lead to very different displacement. For example, small uh, displacement or a complete failure of the structure. So the post-failure behavior uh, requires the simulation of large deformation. And the goal of this study is to develop a tool to simulate large deformation of levy and dam, considering unsaturated behavior of soil and the different hydraulic boundary conditions. This is uh, the summary of my presentation. I will start with an overview of the multi-phase NPM formulation, uh, and then I will present the two-phase NPM formulation for unsaturated soil that we implemented in Anura 3D, and the new hydraulic boundary condition that we developed. And finally, I have, hope to have time to show you an example and conclusion and future development. Soil is a mixture of three phases, solid grain, liquid, and gas. But in many cases, the mathematical model can be simplified as a one-phase material, considering only the momentum balance and the mass balance of the mixture. This is what we do for dry soil, but also for saturated soil in fully drained or fully undrained condition. If we want to account for the relative movement between solid and liquid, then we need to account for the mass balance equation of the liquid and solid separately. This leads us to the two-phase model. If we want to account for the relative movement uh, of the gas, we need to account also for the momentum and mass balance of the gas going to the three-phase model. Moreover, in MPM, uh, we discretize the continuum with material point. With a single point approach, we discretize the soil with only one set of material points that represent the mixture, and they move according to the displacement of the solid. In the double point approach, we have two sets of material points. One uh, set of material points that discretize the liquid phase, and one set of material points that discretize the solid phase. In the formulation that I will present today, uh, we have a two-phase single-point formulation. In order to simulate unsaturated soil with a two-phase formulation, we have to introduce a couple of simplifying assumptions. First is that the gas density is negligible compared to other phases, 
and the gas pressure is constant and equal to zero. So we can discard the momentum and mass balance of the gas. The mass balance, equa the mo governing equation are the momentum balance of the liquid and the momentum balance of the mixture. These two, equa two um, balance equations are discretized uh, um, with the Galerkin method and solved at the node of the mesh. Then we have the mass balance of the solid, the mass balance of the liquid, the constitutive equation of solid and liquid, and the compatibility equation. Mass balances and constitutive equation are solved at the material point level. So the computational cycle is as follows. We have an initialization phase in which the material uh, parameters are, are defined. Then uh, we uh, assemble the momentum balance equation. And then we solve explicitly the momentum balance of the liquid with respect to the acceleration of the liquid. Then we use this solution in the momentum balance of the mixture, and uh, we solve this equation explicitly to solve uh, the acceleration, to find the acceleration of the solid. Um, then the nodal acceleration is used to update the velocity at the material point level, and this is used to update the nodal momentum and velocity, from which we calculate the strain increment at the material point level. Now that we have the strain, we compute the stress with the soil constitutive model and the liquid pressure with solving the mass balance equation. In this formulation, we assume that uh, positive pressures are suctions. So once we have the suction, we can uh, uh, update the degree of saturation of the uh, solid uh, with the soil water retention curve and the hydraulic uh, conductivity with the hydraulic conductivity function. And we also update the density of the mixture. The first four phases are what is usually called in NPM the Lagrangian phase, while the rest um, is what is commonly called the convective phase. Let's now move to the uh, hydraulic band reconditions. So since the formulation is two phase, the boundary condition need to be applied on the liquid and solid phase separately. Considering a dam, the boundary condition on the solid are fixity and load. If we have a water reservoir, we should also include the water weight. The boundary condition on the liquid include the impermeable boundary condition, so fixity for the, uh, for the water, uh, pressures that can be eventually specified as total head if we have a water reservoir. And then we can have uh, infiltration evaporation boundary condition, which is a prescribed discharge. Moreover, at the interface between solid and atmosphere at the downstream level of the dam or levee, it is not known a priori if the condition is Dirichlet or Neumann type. So if it is a pressure boundary condition or a velocity boundary condition. This is called the potential seepage phase. And in um, this boundary, if the soil is saturated, then the liquid is free to exit at zero pressure. So it's a Neumann boundary condition. Otherwise, the boundary becomes closed. In NPM, the boundary move, does the direction and magnitude of the load change at each time step. So we had to implement a procedure to find at each load step the boundary nodes, and uh, we had to recompute the normal at the node with the gradient of mass. The hydraulic head is treated as a liquid pressure on the boundary node. And assuming the validity of the Bernoulli equation, we have that the pressure is computed multiplying the uh, unit weight of the liquid um, times the um, pressure head, which is the applied total head minus the geometric head. The geometric head can change during uh, the calculation process. So this liquid pressure is assembled and added as an external force of the liquid. If, moreover, if the water table exceeds the height of the groundwater surface, then the water weight is also added in the mixture momentum balance equation. Regarding the seepage phase, uh, at this boundary condition, as I said before, we don't know if this is a natural or an essential boundary condition. So we apply a predictor corrector scheme. 
we uh, start assuming zero pressure at this boundary and we predict uh, the solid and liquid velocity. Then at the node, we calculate uh, the um, water discharge. Water discharge is um, the scalar product between the normal at the node and the seepage velocity. The seepage velocity is uh, the um, volumetric concentration ratio of the liquid times the difference between the liquid velocity and the solid velocity. So once we calculate this uh, discharge, we can um, check if it is positive or negative. If the discharge of this node is positive, it means that the water is flowing out of the system at zero pressure. And this is okay. So we don't need any correction for solid and liquid velocity. But if the discharge is negative, it means that the water is flowing into the system at zero, press, at zero pressure. And this is not acceptable. So we have to correct liquid and solid velocity. The correction is calculated imposing that the net discharge is zero and, the, and that the mixture uh, momentum balance is conserved. So um, we can calculate a corrected velocity and corrected acceleration and then move to the convective phase of the calculation. Regarding the infiltration evaporation boundary condition, uh, this can be viewed as an extension of the seepage phase. So again, we solve uh, the momentum balance equation assuming zero pressure at this boundary. Um, we predict solid and liquid velocity, but now we calculate uh, a net discharge introducing also the applied infiltration rate, which is our uh, boundary condition, applied boundary condition. Okay, and then uh, as before, if the, the net discharge is positive, we don't need any correction. If it is negative, then we will calculate a corrected value of uh, um, uh, liquid and solid velocity. Let's now move quickly to uh, an example. This example is inspired by an experimental test published by Ja et al. in 2009. Uh, there is a six meter high slope, um, uh, 15 meter long, uh, with an inclination angle of uh, 45 degrees. The purpose of this study is uh, investigating the performance of the slope uh, when the water level is raised and lower. In the first phase of the test, uh, the water table is raised uh, in six steps by injecting water from the bottom of, uh, of the system and also allowing the water to accumulate in front of the slope. In the second phase, uh, the water level is uh, quickly lowered, opening a valve at the toe of the slope. These are some pictures of the experiment. During the rising of the water table, the crest settled a little bit. And this is due to the wetting induced collapse of the silty sand, but also an initial instability due to the shear strength reduction because of wetting. However, the slope in this case found a new equilibrium configuration with only limited displacement. Then during the drawdown phase, large deformation were triggered. So when the water level outside of the slope was lowered for um, 70 centimeter, a, a large slide, a large block slide down, and then progressively a second one and a third one. We try to capture the essential feature of the phenomenon with NPM. Uh, in this slide, I will show you the um, parameter that we uh, derived from the uh, experiment, so from the published literature in green, and uh, the, in red, the parameter that we used in the numerical model. Um, first of all, uh, we had to use a higher permeability compared to the experiment because this code is explicit. Uh, so we are not able to simulate very long time. Uh, so we had to increase the permeability in order to uh, reduce the, um, the consolidation time, uh, um, so the, the time of the process and uh, increase uh, and decrease the computational cost. Um, 
In the experiment, there, uh, there were uh, several measurements of the dry density that show a certain heterogeneity of the slope. But from this data, we estimated an average uh, value of porosity equal to 0.5. Regarding the soil water retention curve, we calibrated the Van Genutten parameters considering the published adsorption curve. Um, with the, for the consultative model, we want to use the Mohr Coulomb with suction dependence, with the, which is a consultative model that allows us to um, consider the increase of strength due to suction. Uh, in the paper, uh, cohesion and friction angle was uh, derived from triaxial test. Um, so we have C dash and phi dash, but uh, we are missing three other parameters. So delta C max, parameter B, and A. We assume that there is no increase of friction angle with suction, so A is zero. Uh, but we assume two different combinations of delta C max and B. The calculation uh, phases are the following. First, stress are initialized applying boundary condition that result in the same suction measured in the experiment, uh, thanks to some tensiometer that they installed. Then we, um, we have the rising phase in which the uh, pressure is increased at the bottom of the slope and we applied a uh, increasing hydraulic head at uh, the top surface. Um, that, and this is due to uh, take into account the accumulation of water at, in front of the slope. Lastly, the drawdown is simulating, uh, reducing the pore pressure and the hydraulic head. These are the results regarding uh, the rising phase, so where you can see that the pore pressure uh, in the slope uh, um, decreases. At the end of the rising uh, of the water table, the shear surface develops but this does not lead to large deformation. So if we perform a limit equilibrium uh, analysis on this slope, we find uh, a factor of safety 0.996, so very close to one, but lower than one, which means failure. And indeed the slope is failing, but we don't have large displacement, only limit a small settlement, as was observed in the, exper in the experiment. Only during the drawdown, we have very large displacement. And uh, here on the right, you can see the uh, final configuration of the, on the slope with the two um, set of resistance parameters that uh, we consider, where we see that there is not much uh, difference between the two uh, solutions. Uh, we can uh, see that we capture pretty well the uh, deep slip surface, but we were not able to um, predict the very long run out due to fluidization, nor the progressive failure. This is impossible with the constitutive model that we used. So to conclude, we developed an NPM formulation for simulating large deformation of unsaturated soil, and we implemented new boundary conditions that are specific for dam and levy. Uh, this methodology offers an advancement over the current practice uh, um, of estimating the factor of safety because we can also um, es estimate the post-failure behavior, which is good for uh, risk management. Future development uh, includes the improvement of accuracy and stability, in particular the definition of the critical time step size. Uh, moreover, we want to implement more advanced constitutive models to capture those aspects that we are not uh, able to capture yet, like fluidization and progressive failure. And, and moreover, we will validate with the experimental centrifuge tests, but also with real cases. Finally, I would like to thank my collaborator, Veronica Girardi, Alba Guerrero, Mario Martinelli, and Paolo Simonini. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Francesca, for your uh, very nice presentation. And, and uh, sorry, and there is one question from the online audience. Uh, the question is: How do you uh, determine the theoretic line in your code? What is the threshold to distinguish the saturated and unsaturated area? Thank you for the question. Um, we can distinguish saturated and unsaturated area uh, with the degree of saturation. 
So degree of saturation equal to one means that the soil is uh, saturated. If it is lower than one, then uh, it is uh, unsaturated. And this is automatic uh, when uh, we calculate the degree of saturation based on the soil water retention curve. To determine the phreatic line, uh, we can also make a search between uh, um, of those uh, material points that have uh, pressures close to zero. So we can assume that the phreatic line is where is located where the material point have a pressure which is about zero uh, with a, a certain tolerance. So this is what we can do. Okay, okay. Thank you very much again. Okay.